Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. And today we're looking at section 8.1 from the Nelson textbook. So I'm going to help answer a few questions for you. And this way you get a better understanding of waves. Let's get started with question number one. In your own words, explain the difference between a wave and a vibration. Let me just uh, give you the definitions to begin with. Here we have that a vibration is the cyclical motion of an object about an equilibrium point. Whereas a wave is the transfer of energy through a material due to vibration. So let's take a look at these two definitions a little bit further. How I like to think about this, that way I can remember it the best. We think about a wave being formed by moving a string up and down. So here we have to imagine that a person has a string and the string they're making the particle or the way I mean the the string itself just go up and down and as a result of moving the particles up and down they generate a wave that moves to the right so this is kind of like helping you remember that what is a cause and what is the effect so the cause of going up and down which is the vibration itself results in the wave so we have a cause and effect but the cause we need to go a little bit deeper because the vibration we need to make sure that we have an equilibrium point so let's identify it so the equilibrium point will be right where the string would be at rest so we do have to imagine that this string will be tied to a wall on the other end and we call this dashed white line the equilibrium line so once again one way to remember these two things the vibration and wave is we could think about the cause and effect so the cause in this case is the vibration and the effect is the wave so that's one way to remember these two things question number three what properties of a medium allow a wave to pass through most effectively provide an example in your answer now we need to remember that a wave is traveling energy and this traveling energy is energy that's transferred from one particular particle in the medium to another particular particle in the medium. So in other words, we need to be able to increase the number of collisions and the efficiency of these collisions taking place will determine how quickly the energy can pass. In other words, how quickly a wave can pass through. So we can imagine one way to think about this is if we have an open space a closed container and a smaller closed container okay so again a wave is traveling energy how does energy travel to begin with it needs to be transferred from one particle to the next and if we can increase the number of collisions taking place we can increase the speed of the wave itself so if we look at an open space the chances of collisions taking place are much lower because the particles are constantly moving and if they have open space the likelihood of them colliding become lower but if it's a closed container they have a smaller area and the likelihood that a collision will take place increases and if we still take the same number of particles but in a smaller confined space then collisions are much likely higher to occur this means that we can think about the medium and if we have more me more particles in a particular area then the higher the speed of the wave is going to be so one way you can re quickly remember this is the density or the number of particles in a given area 
So in other words, if we increase the density of the medium, which is the number of particles in a given area, this will also increase the wave to pass through more effectively because we, in effect, increase the number of collisions because collisions are more likely to occur. And whenever a collision occurs, the kinetic energy is transferred. This energy transfer is the wave. Question number four, describe three ways in which we use a source of vibration to create waves that are useful to society. Okay, so one way that we can use vibrations, and vibrations can take place in the antenna itself. So here we have an old style TV, and we have a nice listener here. So that's the ear, the eye, nose, mouth. All right, so one way that it, three ways that this is going to be useful to society is we can cause vibrations in the speakers. So we're going to learn in this unit how the speakers are able to produce waves. So that's one way you can cause the vibration, so the speakers. And this vibration will enter our ears, and then it's going to hit the eardrums, and then the vibration is going to be interpreted by our brain into what we know as sound. But we can also see the visual aspect of this, and this is also a wave entering our eyes. Or even better, then we can look at antennas, and antennas receiving the signal or emitting the signal also is a wave. So waves are all around us, and they're useful to us so we can listen to special important speeches that will help us determine the future of our society. So this is really important. Question number five, describe two ways that you think mechanical waves produce effects that are harmful to society. Support your answer with an example not used in question two. Oh, I skipped question two, so I could use anything. But I'm going to try to use something that you wouldn't really think of immediately because you want to be politically correct and sensitive and all that. But sometimes to think, you have to be able to offend. In this case, we usually think of Mother Nature as being very nice and kind and that we need to protect her. But we often forget that Mother Nature itself is always trying to take us down. One example of this occurs due to earthquakes. So earthquakes are vibrations due to the Earth's crust. And before, buildings were not really to consider of this design. And they had to consider these vibrations, but they didn't in the past. They didn't know so much. So those vibrations can cause buildings to fall down if they're not designed properly, which we're going to be looking at later on in this unit. We're going to look at how structural engineers need to consider the vibrations to the earth. And this will help us to make more safe buildings in the future. So again, this is earthquakes. But the earthquakes as well can cause another way to destroy us. So if you think about in the water, when the energy due to vibrations of the earth reach water and then water starts to vibrate, and that vibration causes the water energy to get transferred through in the form of tsunamis. Now, how tsunamis are usually formed, or waves in general, is notice that this difference in height from the surface of the water to the ground is high. So this means that the wave is not going to be so high the, above the water. But when the height starts to decrease of the surface to the surface of the water, then that height needs to be made up in terms of the energy of the water being above the ground. So that's why the tsunamis are usually very, 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 very high above the ground level. And this is another way that Mother Nature takes us down through tsunamis.
Question number six. In a graphic organizer, explain the relationship between the speed of a wave and different media and the particle nature of the media. So as we saw previously, the speed of the wave, it depends on how quickly and efficiently the collisions can occur between the particles of the medium. And we saw that if we increase the density, we increase the likelihood that collisions occur, which means that one way that we can increase the speed of a wave is by increasing the density of the medium, which means high, having higher particles in a given area. But we can make this connection as well with the state of the matter itself. So by state, we can consider for simplicity solids, liquids, and gases. So from those three states, we can think about the density as well, because in a gas state, the particles are going to be further apart. The liquid state, the particles are held by weaker forces, so they're more closer together. And in a solid state, they're held by stronger forces, and the energy goes very quickly between them. So we can categorize the speed of the wave depending on the media the, which is the state of the particle and the density of that particle itself. So that's two things we can consider. So here I've drawn the, the three states of matter, gas, liquid, and solid. And this arrow will show you the direction of the wave speed increasing. So the speed of the wave increases if we go into the solid state. So from gas, liquid, and solid, the fastest will be solids because the particles are more tightly held together, which increases the efficiency of collisions. We can recall this from our previous discussion of density. So as the density increases, so the number of particles in a given area increases, then the speed of the wave also increases. Now we can get into discussion about the temperature, which is the kinetic energy of the particles themselves. And the higher the number of uh, the higher the number of kinetic energy amount it has, then this will also increase the number of collisions. So this increases with temperature as well. But that will be left for a different discussion. For now, this is uh, simpli simplistic enough for you to keep in mind.